Hello and welcome to the movie room. So, I realised the other day when I was making a box set video that my collecting of films and movies started a long, long time ago when I was a kid. And I used to go to the cinema a lot with my dad who used to love taking me to the cinema and we used to go to uh, movie fairs and these were a fantastic place for a kid like me who loved film so much to go because there were so many things to purchase and one thing I did love as a kid was posters so I thought I would dig out my old poster collection now these are the collection of smaller posters uh, I think they're just called little quad posters, mini posters they're sometimes known as and they were given out free at the cinema most of the time I think some of these I got from the cinema and some of them I bought from these film fairs that me and my dad used to go to I do have a collection over that side of large posters, the actual uh, one sheet posters I think they're called um, but the problem is they've been wrapped up for so long in poster tubes uh, they're really really tall and wrapped up like I tried flattening them out they've been laid out for like two weeks now but they're just yeah they just go straight back up to a folded position so I'll have to figure that out another time so I thought why not start with the little ones first because they're nice and flat I've always kept them nice and flat so let's get straight into it so the first thing right at the very top so i think they give these out to like press kits and photographers and um maybe people who are going to review the film uh so leon an amazing film cool classic uh, it's actually my favorite film of all time i absolutely love this film the day i've seen it the uncut version obviously because the BBFC version is absolutely horrendous. Luckily now, for some reason, it's been allowed to be released uncut in the UK. But yeah, they actually cut this film by a massive amount. I think it was like, I don't want to say it, but I think it was about 12 minutes they cut from this film. Which is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely horrendous. It is one of the best films of all time my opinion um so this is in french as well uh but it is in british so or in uh, english should i say yeah so it's in english and french as well beautiful just a little bit it's one of my favorite scenes the uh rooftop scene absolutely amazing shot of central park um yeah beautiful Great little booklet, very rare. You don't see these anymore. I love these like little little trace paper still. It's fantastic. Great little book. I remember when I seen this, I had to have it. And again, a classic picture as well. Natalie Portman. Uh, the composer, Eric Senna. Great soundtrack. Uh, Eric Serra, sorry. Uh, great soundtrack. I have the soundtrack as well. Um, yeah, brilliant. Next up, I haven't seen half of these. Like, I didn't go through them. These were in a bag, I actually took the bag. Took them out of the bag, but I've not been through them in about, I think, four years. So I think this is a free poster. Yeah. So this is just a free poster of uh, Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean. I think this is just a movie, in a movie magazine. I think this was actually given to me. Um, I did go and see the Pirates of the Caribbean, the original, when it was at the cinema. I thought they were pretty good films as a kid, but not so much my thing these days. Again, another Leon. This is brilliant. This is from Empire Magazine. And apart from this, it's actually really good quality. Uh, it's on like card. I think I did have it in a frame at one point, but I think the frame broke. But I've still got the picture, classic picture as well. Natalie Portman in the O, Leon in the background. I love the red, the red grow. It's great. 
yeah, interesting theme you will notice. Angelina Jolie is in a lot of stuff that I collected as a kid because I was a hormonal teenager and Angelina Jolie was, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. And one of the most handsome guys, Brad Pitt, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Incidentally, the film that brought them together. Who would have thunk it? Anyway, this is a press kit for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's a very weird book, though. It's So, it's laid out one side, obviously, for Brad Pitt's character. And then you have to flip it. And then it's laid out another way for Angelina Jolie's character. Absolutely loved this film as a kid. Um, don't see why I wouldn't now. Love that scene. M92, fully automatic, I'm guessing, and a Glock. It's probably a 19. I think the 19 was the full auto switch Glock with extended mags. Um, that's enough of my gun knowledge anyway. Yeah, casting credits. So yeah, this was like a, a media press kit type thing again. Again, at the movie fairs, you usually found stuff like this. That's why they were fantastic. Big envelope. I do not know what's in here. It actually says one thing that's in here. Predator 2. Uh, L foreign poster or foreign poster I think that might be a bracket I can't actually remember that um, let's see let's just grab the first things so I think these are movie posters uh, from magazine sorry yeah they are this is just a Superman Superman Returns don't think I've seen it and then V for Vendetta same again don't think I've seen it I know it's a cult classic now the uh, V for Vendetta, but I just wasn't interested in it. Um, the Matrix was the only thing that interested me. Another poster, X Men. Did love X Men. Beast. And yeah, Wolverine. X Men 3. A lot of, a lot of nonsense over the third one. Um, I could go on about the original trilogy of X Men. Uh, Brian Singer didn't want to make them, basically. Uh, he wanted to make other films, but he had to make them. I think he was contractually obliged to, and then that's why he eventually just bailed on the third one. Um, okay, so these, from what I remember, these are actually just photocopies. People photocopied stills and printed them and sold them at the film fairs. You can see their prices on the top, that was 50p. This is the original cast from the original Friday the 13th, Kevin Bacon. Most major Hollywood superstars uh, starring uh, horrors. It's Kevin Bacon in Friday the 13th. Johnny Depp starred in Nightmare on Elm Street. He got pulled through the bed with the TV. So yeah. Um, Trespass, brilliant film. If you haven't seen it, highly underrated. Ice T is really good actor, by the way. Like he is really good. He is really, uh, he is really underrated as an actor, in my opinion. Um, a lot of his films are fantastic. He's in another one called Surviving the Game, which I need to talk about at some point on this channel. Surviving the Game was fantastic. He was in that. He's brilliant. Ice Cube as well, very good actor. Um, yeah, his character is not great in this film, but still fantastic film classic shot from natural born killers mickey and mallory knox played by woody harrelson and juliette lewis juliette lewis one of the best actresses um of the night is in my opinion brilliant actress uh i love woody harrelson again he's great especially in this i love this film it's one of my favorite films as well another classic picture lost boys amazing film for all the right reasons absolutely brilliant film classic this is great like the quality of these is fantastic like this is printed on kodak paper so they put it this is one of the still images Vinny and jules from pulp fiction I need to put this in my box set actually um this is when they're in uh, tarantino's house getting cleaned up thomas jane the punisher Fantastic remake. Uh, gutted that this franchise hasn't been worked upon more. They had the series, 
Um, from what I hear, the series was pretty good. I can't find it on Blu-ray or DVD, uh, so I think Netflix is just not releasing it, and they're just leaving it on there, but I refuse to get Netflix. So hopefully I'll see it one day. Another clip, I love this photo. Um, Master and Commander, Russell Crowe. Highly underrated film. Um, probably one of the best historical... Uh, historical accuracies of uh, naval warfare granted these are based on the master and commander novels which are not actually based in the historical timeline but uh, it gives you a great insight as to what naval warfare was all about uh, fantastic i learned a lot from this film just, just being interested this is an actual this is an actual real ship that exists uh, called the rose and they bought it. Not it's not the Mary Rose. It's just HMS Rose, I think. It was still in service, and they bought it for the film, and they converted it into the surprise. Fantastic film. Russell Crowe was brilliant in this film. The whole film's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's very well done. Very very well done. If you haven't seen this film, I highly recommend it. Uh, next up. There's so much in here, and uh, struggling to keep up. Okay, next up, wow, some Marilyn Monroe's. Always love Marilyn Monroe. Through my mum, really. My mum admired Monroe. Uh, so beautiful. These are great. These are like fact finding cards. I remember buying these. I bought them because of the quality, how good they were. But these are like fact finders. Really good quality. I love the. How old they look as well it's quite washed out you can't see it on camera but it's quite yellowed but I like that yeah this just says Marilyn Monroe on the back it's got a bit of a crease but this is one of the younger photos that's fantastic these are all fact finders again what's the date on these 1985 so these were before I was born again it's got a slightly yellow tint you can't see that on the camera I'm not sure why maybe because of the auto correcting fantastic again classic image rare image as well like these days you won't see this with actors and actresses with the cigarettes that's how representative they are at the time so it's just a breakdown of Monroe's life a little quick one it's interesting it tells you how she was found overdose of drugs we don't get into the uh, conspiracy of that but yeah just thought these were really nice as a kid Marilyn Monroe, who doesn't like her, still have a picture of an now, frame picture that is in my uh, living room. Next. Oh wow, oh, I forgot I had these. So where's the first one? Yeah, okay, excellent. So, these are lobby stills from Young Guns. Young Guns is my favourite western. Uh, I have a tattoo quote. On my arm. That's how much I love these. Uh, this film. That's brilliant. I actually have a frame movie poster as well in my uh, room. These are fantastic. These are original lobby uh, lobby set as well. So I paid fifteen pounds. My God, probably about twenty years ago now. It's incredible how old I'm getting. But I was definitely only eleven, twelve when I got these. Um, I used to pay with them for my own money, by the way. I used to work alongside my dad, and he used to pay me. So it was my dad's money, but I did work for him. So I didn't just get them. It wasn't I wasn't a rich kid by any stretch of imagination. I worked alongside my dad. I was on a little apprentice, and um, yeah, that's how I was able to afford. Classic image. Billy Emilio Westerers, when he jumps out the box right at the end. If you haven't seen this film... Uh, what, why? Why haven't you? Turn this video off now and go and watch Young Guns. Uh, Colt Western. Not one of the most successful, but it's certainly one of the best. Kiefer Sutherland, classic. Classic actor. It's brilliant. Uh, Chasey. Chasey or Casey Samesco and Dermot Mulrooney. Dirty Steve and Charlie Baldry. Classic scene. Uh, this is the scene, the lead up to where Billy shoots Sheriff Brady, Charlie Sheen, 
as uh, Richard Brewer or Dick Brewer. Um, there's a little funny, little funny joke at one point where they show the newspaper of Billy the Kid, and obviously Emilio Estevez is Charlie Sheen's brother, and they actually put a picture of uh, Charlie Sheen up, and um, I thought that was pretty funny because I think that they're just referencing that the brothers and they look similar. So this is interesting. So this is obviously Billy with John Tunstall, played by uh, Terrence Stamp. And as you can see, he's like grasping Billy to talk to him about something. This scene's not in the film. There's not a lot of extras to do with this film. Um, I, I should not have looked. I do have one DVD. Uh, I can't remember which country it's from, but I can't play it because I haven't got a multi-region. But there is a commentary with the cast and crew, and I'd love to watch it and listen to it and see what they have to say about this film. Um, hopefully they'll release it on Blu-ray. They've just released some brand new Blu-rays of this, uh, which I'll be investing in, because if they got the extras on, then it'll be worth it for me. Lou Diamond Phillips as Jose Chavez y Chavez. Really underrated in this film. He's brilliant. His acting is brilliant. And the character in this is completely different uh, to what Chavez was in real life. Chavez was a really nasty guy in the actual gang. He was a murderer. Um, he he drank a lot. He did drugs. Um, he was, interestingly, though, he was one of the only surviving gang members. He doesn't actually die. They kill him off in the second one. I have no idea why, maybe to move the story forward. But he doesn't actually die um, in the gang, in the regulator gang, if you know anything about the history. I know a lot about the history, like I say, because I, I love the actual history, because they're not actually outlaws. They were fighting a merchant war, um, and they were actually called the Ironclad. Uh, the regulators, there was actually about 50 or 60 of them. Most of them were like Mexican farmers, had the farmland stolen or the cattle stolen or rustled away by uh, LJ and Murphy and co. Um, but yeah, he survived. I think after they escaped Tunstall's house, which you see at the end of the first film, I think that's when he parted ways and he just went his separate way and he was sort of like a rogue. And he ended up living till the 30s, I think. And then he eventually died. But it annoys me how no one found him and questioned him on Billy the Kid and actually got a more inside information no one actually got him and sat him down and written a book with him and explained how he's actually one of the most famous sort of gang members of the western era because he was a part of Ironclad um, so yeah it's a real shame they never did that but I could go on about Young Guns all along I I'm definitely going to do a video on it separately because it's one of my biggest loves uh, it's a great scene of him riding in. And then the classic image of Emilio as Billy right at the end. This is when he shoots LJ and Murphy. He doesn't actually kill Murphy in real life. Um, but I guess they did in the film just to sort of wrap it up. I don't think there was ever supposed to be a second film. But uh, now, obviously, they made it much, like many, many years later. Um. These ones, it, this picture's funny because of this guy, just turning around. They obviously told the uh, extras not to stare at them. So he's riding into town with his new gang. Um, so they tried to continue it on from the first one, but the thing is the first one put so many historical moments in. The second one struggled a little bit, so they sort of actually backtrack. Most of the stuff that happens in the second one actually takes part during the first one. But they don't sort of adhere to that. Um, just more classic images. I enjoyed the second one. Um, interesting as well. Viggo Mortensen actually stars in this. A bit part. John W. Poe plays. He's like a bounty hunter who goes after the kid in the gang. That's uh, Pat Garrett played by, I can't remember his name, I feel really bad. But yeah, more importantly, Viggo Mortensen is in this film. 
uh, that's actually the blurred card as well that's not my camera focus and you can see how focused it is but yeah interesting um let's see what's next so yeah i love young guns anyway i could talk about it forever but, uh envelope is there anything in this no nothing in that i assume i just put it in there to keep everything flat or there was and i took something out and never put it back piece of card that's got nothing on it again i must have used it to keep things flat uh-huh so this is a poster i think this is yeah it is this is the predator poster this is, i think this is really rare it's a shame it's been folded but so it says hunting season is op opens again predator to this christmas wow this was a christmas film interesting this is a beautiful poster the camera really doesn't do it justice it's so big so this is definitely an original poster it's not in the best condition but i'm still convinced this is a rare poster i do remember getting this now it's a, it's a beautiful poster i always said i'd put it in a frame never did as you can tell it's just folded up sadly um no idea what this is Oh wow, this is my Young Guns poster. This is an original as well. Um, so yeah, they look so much better on camera, but this is actually a really poor quality. This is an original. You can tell by the paper and the feel and the color of it as well. It's actually, again, it's yellow, but like I say, for some reason they show up really nice and clean, but the You can see it's got damage at the bottom. Oh, I forgot I had this as well. Man, it's, it brings back so many memories. I had this on my wall, for sure, because you can see the whole blue tack and the uh, trick with the... So you put sellotape on the back. So the uh, blue tack, the oil on it, uh, doesn't go through and damage the poster. I don't think it has on this one. I think it's just because the poster's quite... The, the paper that it's made out of is incredible. But yeah, that's my original one sheet of Young Guns. These posters are rare. Uh, this one isn't because it's not in great condition. It's been folded several times. But I have seen these on the internet. They do go for quite a bit of money. It's a fantastic poster. Another one I said I put in a frame. Never did. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this was given away free by the uh, News of the World. And this post is huge. I'm not going to fold it out now, but what I'll do is I'll fold it out and take a picture. But this is massive. This is like a wall size photo. It's probably a poster, sorry. It's probably more more the size of like a, a bus bus stop poster, I guess. But yeah, it was given away by the free News of the World or The Sun. I think I got it out of the News of the World because The Sun had new pictures in. So I think it was from the News of the World. And the local... Uh, from the local shop i remember he had loads and yeah ran around and got it on the days when you as a kid you could go out and go to the shop safely but yeah that's what that is i'll fold it out and take a picture and put it up because it's way too big um, and this envelope's pretty much empty apart from so it says exclusive dvd it might be the premiere like it might be like a premiere trailer type thing and then you get the 3d glasses in i can't remember why again it was just free and yeah i don't know if these are rare or not i imagine not and then lord of the rings oh this was yeah odian wow so i went and seen all the lord of the rings at the cinema with my dad and they give these out of the Odeon sadly the Odeon I used to go to was was closed down and it was classed as a a, a historical building or at least before a listed building they're called in the UK a beautiful old cinema and then they pulled it down I do have pictures um, of the destruction I will try and find them and put them on this video uh, it's heartbreaking witnessing it being pulled down because I had a lot of great memories of me and my dad going there. So yeah, wow. 
that I forgot I had. It's incredible. This video has gone on long enough, uh, so we'll end it here and I'll do a part two where we'll get on to the mini posters. So I'll see you in part two. Thank you. Bye bye.